Hey everyone, it's Dr. Garen. I'm a doctor of physical therapy, board certified sports specialist, and self-proclaimed ACL specialist, which means I'm a big old nerd. I made this video for parents, guardians, coaches, um, who have young athletes who have torn uh, their ACL or maybe even retorn. Um, you know, I work with young athletes every day, high school, college, professional, and you know how it is talking to 16 and 25 year olds. It's kind of in one ear and out the other and they're invincible and it's never gonna happen to them. Uh, so I wanna specifically make this video for you guys because this information is very surprising and it's very important. Um, I think healthcare, you know, we as healthcare professionals don't do a great job of educating our patients and families all the time, especially in those hard conversations that, um, you know, our expectations might be different than their expectations. If you, if you use Dr. Google um, or you know compare it to what professional athletes are doing, it's a very different reality for most young athletes. And the research is pretty shocking on that. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. Uh, I think it's important that you guys are kind of armed with that information so that we can make good decisions um, when the time comes. All right, let's jump into it. So only about 55% of athletes actually return to a competitive level of sport. I don't know about you, but when I first learned this, I was pretty surprised by that. And I mean, that is, that's why I have the icon there. That's like a flip of the coin. You have about a 50% chance of actually getting back to a competitive level. Um, real quick, so I'm gonna go through all of these statistics because I know not everyone can make it through a whole video, but I, I'm gonna talk a little more about what these mean at the end. So stay with me. Um, even more alarming than that, only about 38% of, of people stay at the same level of competition two years after their ACL surgery. So they went back to sport, they were playing for you know up to two years and only about 38% of them was able to compete at that high level for those two years. And even more alarming than that somehow, um, 33, roughly 33% will go on to re-tear. So the statistics vary. Some report, you know, 20, 29, 33. Obviously, I'm trying to get people to pay attention and perk up. So I had to put the bigger number up there, but it's not exaggerated. 33% will re-tear, unfortunately. And of those 33%, 70% of those people, so of the 33% that retear, 70% will tear their other knee. And we know that females tear their other knee more than males. Now this requires its you know, own video, which I'll eventually do about why the other knee is torn um, and, and why this is, is so high. It's, it's very shocking. And then young athletes who return to sport have a rate of new injury seven times that of those who delay return. Time isn't, time is just a piece of the puzzle for sure. Um, a lot of other factors go into the return to sport decision making as I'll discuss in subsequent videos. But this was a, a really shocking one because I mean, Dr. Google and I think when I ask patients on a regular basis what their expectations are, most people um, say about six, seven months. So real quick, I don't wanna lose you guys here, um, but I do want to explain real quick about research. So if you notice, and you probably didn't, <laughs> unless you're into research, um, a lot of these studies are systematic reviews and meta-analyses. Meta-analyses, I cannot talk. When you're kind of looking at the quality of information and the quality of research, so expert opinion is there at the bottom. That's somebody like me having an opinion and trying to say that that's how kind of everyone should do things, right? And obviously you don't just, that matters, but you don't just take one person's opinion. And then up from that is like a you know, case series or report where maybe you're following an athlete or some athletes. So up from that is like a case series or case report where maybe you're following you know, an athlete or some athletes, let's say, 
you know, a few girls who toured their ACL in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's, you know, also okay, but when you're trying to have power and generalized results, obviously three girls from Pittsburgh, their results and experience can be generalized to a large population. Um, but if you look at the top, that's where systematic reviews and meta-analyses come in. They're basically taking really good articles and people way smarter than me and better at math are you get, uh, using data analysis to kind of summarize those articles and, and come up with good statistics and opinions. Um, so that's what these articles are that I put in here. So I, I want to be, um, I don't want to be some guy that's just making up statistics. You know, 80% of statistics are made up. I, I want to put good information out there. I think this stuff's really important. So I wanted to go back to this. So what do I mean by same level of competition? Okay. So Arden et al. 2016 kind of um, developed this return to sport continuum, right? So it's this idea that, you know, you don't get cleared from PT on Thursday, see the surgeon Friday, and are playing in the game Monday night. Um, it, it should be this kind of timeline, right? Or this, uh, yeah, continuum. Um, where return to participation is maybe you're practicing, working on skills, getting that kind of game speed endurance back, but you're not actually playing yet. And then return to sport is you made it back to your sport, you're playing, you're competing. If it's a contact sport, you're con, you know, you're taking contact, but um, maybe you're not at your pre-injury level yet, or you haven't met your goal of where you want to be. Uh, maybe you want to be doing better than that. And that's kind of where this return to performance comes in and what a lot of these articles are talking about. So return to performance is you're essentially at or above your pre-injury level status and you're highly competitive. Maybe you're setting PRs, you're getting noticed, you're doing well and you're moving forward. And most of these art articles are arguing that not many people actually get back to that level of competition. So in some reality, you know, ACL tears are kind of a career ending sport. Maybe some people get back, they, you know, they kind of just get by and then they, they stop playing for, you know, one reason or another. But that unfortunately is kind of the harsh reality of ACL rehab right now. And we need to do a, a much better job. And there's a lot of reasons why that is. And I'm absolutely going to make another video about that. I want to talk a little more about this. Um, so why the other knee? Again, this is a deep dive, but I want you to just get this conceptually real quick. If your knee isn't ready to go back, it can't meet the demands of the sport, the demands of the task. Say you're in a game and you have to decelerate real quick, make a move, cut, pivot, juke, whatever, and you're placing a, a lot of force and load through that knee and it's not ready, guess, up, guess what? what's making up for it it's the other knee and that's why we're you know thinking that it's probably well that's probably why the other knee is tearing um, there's other factors that go into it but I, I hope that makes kind of sense conceptually obviously the other the knee is going to compensate heavily so I want you all to take a second and kind of consider what's at stake here um, the time energy commitment money that goes into ACL rehab is, is a lot it's a long time it's a lot of effort from you know the patient and the family and even considering like you know the psychological burdens right if you, you know if sport and athlete is your identity right what do you do I play football what else do you do I'm an athlete I play sports that's what I do right it's like it, it's ingrained in a lot of people and if you're never able to get back to it, you, you have to realize that that's probably something pretty tough to deal with. Um, I mean, even consider, you know, if you have a scholarship on the line, right? Student loans are outrageous these days. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Went to school for a very long time. They're outrageous these days. And if you have a scholarship that can potentially pay for some of that um, or all of it, I mean, what is and you tear and you can't, and you don't get that scholarship, like I couldn't even imagine that heartbreak. Or if you're in college, right, and you're kind of expected to go to the pros and you have, you know, seven figure payday and you tear and you never get back. I mean, I don't even, 
what do you even say about that, right? You know, scholarships, money, those are sexy things to talk about. What, what people, you know, don't talk about enough is just longevity, long-term knee function. Um, and, and what we're seeing is a lot of early arthritis. So there's this article right here, the Association of Quad Strength with ACL tear at a five-year follow-up. And what this shows is that 21% of participants already were showing signs of clinical osteoarthritis. So you also don't wanna be that person who's 40 or 50 that's already having a knee replacement. So you can see that a lot is at stake here, guys. This is important for athletes and parents to know. There is something we can do about this. We can absolutely be better and we need to be better. So I, I want to make this video for you guys. I hope you like it. Um, you can tell that I'm obviously new to YouTube. Uh, please like and, and subscribe and share. Uh, even if you don't like me, um, that's okay. Just maybe share this with somebody who you think it could help. My email's in the description below. Feel free to email me. I'm happy to chat about the latest and greatest in ACL training, performance, all those kind of return to sport test assessments that we use to make good decisions and kind of what goes into expert clinical decision making for return to sport so that hopefully, you know, we're not just making these statistics worse um, or adding to these statistics. We want, I want to personally, I want to improve these statistics. I want to help kids um, and young athletes from all this stuff we already talked about. So thank you again and uh, see you again soon.